we talked about state-space systems. Here is a quick recap of what we have done last time. We talked about the concept of a state-space system and why that is useful. And if you think about it, we always build things. If we build things, a large system, we always build element by element, so module by module. So in that sense, it is natural to have the concept of a state and the state space. So in the example of a mass spring damper, we analyze element by element. It's natural to think of the motion, the entire motion of the whole system by considering the position and the velocity. Understanding how individually these two elements evolve will give us a complete picture of the system. So the same thing, the benefit of a state-space system is that we can get insights into how these individual elements inside the big system actually evolves. On the contrary, if you go to the transfer function domain, then what we see is we can get to know very well the relationship between the input U and the output Y. We can get to know them very well. But, uh, is not having the concept of, like, if you just look at the transfer function from, let's say, a force applied to a mass, you look at the transfer function from U to the position, then you're focusing, you have very specific focus. You're thinking about how the position is going to evolve, right? And then you are not, so the velocity element inside this system is sort of left out in this transfer function analysis. That's the difference between these two. And then there are ways to go from one way to another. We talked about if you have a state space system, A, B, C, D, whether it's in continuous time or whether it's in discrete time system, both are really important for practical control designs. If you have the state space formulations, then it is very easy to go from one side to another. You just apply, for this case, you just apply Laplace transform, then you can get the transfer function from u to y. Same thing, you apply z transform to this one, then you can get to know the transfer function pretty well. So it is very straightforward to go from one side to another. And the tools, Laplace z, are in that sense very useful. Now, what I want to talk about today is now we are starting to analyze more about these systems where these a, b, c, d, these are all matrices. I want to give a quick recap of the relevant tools in linear algebra. And then uh, we're going to jump into how now, given some, let's say, state-space models, we can use linear algebra tools to whether make the system simpler to analyze or make the design of control systems to be intuitive and meaningful. I will talk about a little bit about vectors, vector space, and matrices. And uh, I will talk about interesting problems such as this, using tools of matrix and linear algebra, how you can work on problems such as this that uh, seemingly to be complicated, but it's actually not. <laughs>